Okay. Well, it looks like we've got a really good, a really good turnout. Thanks, thanks ever so much to everybody for joining us today for for our uh, presentation. Um, what we'll do first of all is we'll have the sales team, the Wellspring sales team, just introduce themselves. At the end of the webinar, we'll we'll open it up for a, a Q and A session, um, and that session, just to let you know, that will be recorded. Um, so in the meantime, um, well, I'll introduce myself. First of all, um, I think it says on the screen that my name is Darby Simpson. <clears throat> I'm not actually Darby Simpson, although I think the name quite suits me. I could get used to it. Um, I'm actually Rich Murphy and, uh, and I'm one of the, the sales team here at Wellspring. Um, and yeah, I think it's a good, moment to maybe introduce some of my colleagues. So um, I'm just going to go around my screen as I see you. So uh, Harry, could you just briefly introduce yourself? Uh, yes, thanks, uh, Rich. Yep. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Harry Khan. I'm in charge of Korea, Taiwan, and Japan as well. So uh, please enjoy this uh, webinar. And also, uh, thank you uh, for your time. Uh, it's 3 a.m. Uh, in, in the U.S. So um in uk and, um, Nate, nate's not up that late i think uh 8 p.m nate oh yeah i was i was gonna say don't don't give me too much credit yeah. it's, only, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's only 8 p.m here so it's not not too late not too yeah, late it's, it's 3 a.m uh uk time though but uh but yeah but nate's still working late so credit where credit's due thanks a lot harry uh yep. lynn would you like to to say a few words yeah, sure. Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Lin. Uh, I'm based in Vietnam and I'm working with Thuy. She's also the director of uh, Southeast Asia Market. So I and Thuy will be in charge of the regions and uh, support for you guys. So after the webinar, if you guys have any questions, just feel free to reach out to us. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Lin. Nindia? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nindia. I'm from Jakarta, Indonesia, and I handle Indonesia market. So if you have any question, feel free to reach out to me. You can WhatsApp me anytime. Thank you. Thanks, India and Shin. Yeah, thank you, Rage. Hi, guys. Uh, good morning. I'm sorry that I'm just at effort, so I just turned off my camera. I'm Shin, and I'm based in Beijing. I'm China director and I'm mainly responsible for the mainland China. I also have my colleague Vivian, who is in uh, Hangzhou, and also Patrick, who's not here, and he's based in Guangzhou. So uh, if you guys have any questions regarding CSU or any other products, um, feel free to reach out to us. We are more than happy to help. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Shin. And then finally, Vivian. Hi, this is Vivian, and I work based in Hangzhou, China, and I work with my director, Xin. And if you have any question, please feel, feel can you hear me? I brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vivian. All right, okay. So now we hand over to the star of the show. So Nate, Nate Duggins is uh, the international recruitment manager at Colorado State University. Um, and thanks a lot, Nate, for for uh, for giving up your time this evening uh, to to introduce us to the school. Um, so I'll hand over to you just to let everyone know, just to reiterate, we'll do the questions at the end. Um, uh, and so once Nate's finished with his presentation, I'll start letting you into the into the Zoom room so that you can um, you can either ask your questions um, via video or you can type them into the Q&A box. OK. All right. Thanks a lot, Nate. Yeah, thanks, Rich. And uh, thanks to the other members of the Wellspring team for being here. I appreciate it. Um, and all the attendees, um, I appreciate it. That's a pretty good turnout. So that's that's very impressive. Um, just a brief background about me. Like Rich said, my name is Nathan Duggins, International Recruitment Manager at Colorado State University. Um, I've been working in international education for about 10 years. Uh, seven of those have been on the university side where I, I currently am right now. And then um, 
uh, about three of those have been on the high school side. So I, I did and used to live in in Shin's next neck neck of the woods in Beijing, China, working at a at a high school there. So I've experienced it from the high school side and from the university side. So it's been been helpful to have uh, those perspectives. So I'm gonna open up my presentation now. I promise this isn't going to be like an hour long presentation. Uh, I've sat through those myself. <laughs> I'm assuming that's not what you want. It's going to be a very brief overview of Colorado State. Um, we are a fairly large university with a lot of different academic offerings. So we don't get terribly specific in the presentation. We can we can use that time for the Q&A. Um, so the goal of the presentation is to kind of get very, very general information and kind of get a cultural feel of the university and kind of kind of kind of what we're all about. So let me share that and we can get rolling here. OK, uh, thumbs up. Other panelists, can you see it? Perfect. OK, so we'll just kind of start off with with just pure location, where, where where are we located? The U.S. is a very very large country, uh, so Colorado State located in the in the state of Colorado in a city called Fort Collins, Colorado. So the the city itself is only about one hundred seventy five thousand people. So it it it's really really not not that big of a city. The university is about thirty thousand students. So if you, you know, think 30,000 students in a 175,000 person town, a very large percentage of our population are students. Uh, the university is a huge part of our town. It's, it's, it's the main economic driver. Everything is really geared towards student and student success because it, it is such an important part of, of the city of Fort Collins. Um, Colorado itself, I think, can vary simply be summed up in one word and that's mountains. We are an incredibly mountainous state. And so all of the natural beauty, all of the recreational opportunities like skiing or trekking or cycling or just being outside, that, that, that's kind of what we are culturally. Um, we are located, our university's bay, oh, it's maybe a two to three minute drive from the mountains if you wanted to bicycle there you could do that um but if you talk to people you know who have been to colorado whether they're from the us or not i mean we are very heavily talked about about being kind of a naturally beautiful beautiful state um we don't we don't try to lie to our students if you are looking for a large metropolitan area that that's just not who we are like I said, we only have 175,000 people. We are located one hour from our capital city of, of Denver, which is about three to four million people. And we're, we're about one hour from our international airport where you would where you would fly in. So that's just a very brief background of, of kind of where where we're located and what our what our town's like. So. There's a lot on here. Uh, I'm not going to go through every one, but like I said, we're 30,000 students, and you know, in the U.S., that would be kind of considered a, a, a larger institution. We're a large public university. Uh, we have Division One athletics. Students get to go to those events for free. We have 15 residence halls on our campus. We have halls for bachelor students. We have halls for students getting their master's or PhDs. We have halls for students that are bringing their families with them. So we, we are very accommodating. We have seven different cafeterias that can handle all sorts of dietary restrictions. Or if you're on a certain diet due to religious beliefs, we can handle all of that stuff because we have students from, from all over the country and all over the world that come to Colorado State. Uh, the one thing that I will focus on on this slide is uh, research. So a lot of students ask me, you know, what, you know, what is it about Colorado State that's different? You know, what separates you all? I mean, and, and I always say, well, one, our location. I mean, we're located right at the base of the largest mountain range. Um, some students care about that. Some students don't. Um, but, but one is our research. I mean, Colorado State ranks in the top 10% in the entire U.S. in terms of the amount of research funding that it receives. So you can see on that slide kind of in the bottom right, you know, we get over $450 million a year in research funding. And so that fundamentally 
changes the type of educational experience you're going to get. So if you're coming in and wanting to do, let's say, research at the undergraduate bachelor's degree level, we have the funding to do that. Where other universities, most universities across the U.S., very simply, they, they just don't. Um, so if, if, if you want to come in and say, do a master's degree and you want to do a professional degree, that's not so research-based, we can offer that. Or if you want to do the other side where it's really intensely research-based, we can offer that because we just simply have the funds that, that allow us to do that. So that is something that it may not jump off the page at you or, or seem that flashy or seem that important, but, but it, it really is kind of the the backbone of, of our educational offerings at Colorado State. And it's going to kind of give you an experience that you might not be able to get it at other institutions. Um, some of our most popular majors. So, so we have, again, I don't know who's out there wanting bachelor's or, or master's degrees or, or PhDs, um, but, but they're pretty similar among our, our, our international population. So at the undergraduate level, we have about 100 different bachelor's degrees. Um, at the graduate level, we have about 80. So we're, we're pretty comprehensive in, in what we can offer. And these are some of our, our most popular ones. So the biomed, the business, computer science, economics, and, and engineering. So I, I like this because it's not just kind of solely focused on one area like STEM. Um, we have a lot of students studying a lot of different things. We have a lot of students from China studying agriculture, where we have a really big agricultural program. Uh, one of the things I always tell students that we don't offer really any any of the marine programs. We're not located near an ocean, so we don't have those, but but pretty much everything else, we can, we can give that to you. And then uh, where are our students coming from? So we have over a hundred different countries represented on our campus. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, India, Vietnam, Uzbekistan, those are our top five right now. And that was in the fall 2023 class. So next, next fall, 2024, this could change. Um, India, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, uh, they've, they've pretty consistently, excuse me, been, been near the top for us. Vietnam has been slowly climbing. Um, Uzbekistan has been slowly climbing as well. But I think this speaks largely to our recruitment efforts where we, I mean, we go everywhere. We go everywhere in the world and, 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 and try to get students. We don't want to be kind of, we don't want to just stick to one country because we know, we know that's not really a sustainable model. So we're very, very international campus. You can see over a hundred countries, um, but these are our top five right now. So, so real, real quick, um, you know, these are, these are for the students looking, looking at the bachelor's, uh, our bachelor's programs. So you can see kind of our average GPAs. We don't set minimum. We don't say you have to have a certain grade point average or you're not going to get in. We don't do that. Um, you can see our English language requirements for TOEFL, IELTS. We do accept Duolingo at the bachelor's degree level. Um, and we are a common application school. That is the only way you can apply. This is kind of an older slide. We actually don't offer a fee waiver anymore. So I apologize, I should have taken that out. But really what we're looking for is your common application, your transcripts, uh, and then the, the common application essay. We do not require an SAT or an ACT for our bachelor's students and we don't require a letter of recommendation. So we're, we're pretty, we, we try to make it as simple as possible, but but this is kind of an overview of, of the bachelors. Um, the, and I'll, I'll just I'll just keep going here. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the graduate side in the next couple slides. Um, here is, again, st sticking with the undergraduate, the bachelor's degree, here's kind of costs and scholarships. So all of our students, if admitted, are automatically looked at for scholarships. Okay, and they range from two thousand to uh, twelve thousand dollars per year. Um, we do have a couple scholarships that can go up to fifteen thousand, which is uh, is about fifty percent uh, tuition discount. Um, there's no separate application. That's the one thing that I stress with students is, you know, you you, know, you all need to fill out enough forms as it is. We don't want to make you fill out another 
scholarship form. So if you apply and get accepted to a bachelor's program, you will automatically be considered for um, for, for funding. And last year, it was about 82% of our admitted international students received some sort of funding. So it's it's quite high. So for those looking for graduate degrees, it's 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 a little bit it's a little harder to discuss because with the bachelor's uh, students, our office, our team, we control the process the entire way. We process your application, we review your application, we give mid decisions, we do scholarships, we do everything from the second that you email us to the second that you arrive on campus for orientation. We, we are there. With the graduate students, those applying for master's and bachelor's degrees, kind of the role that we, we play is we will collect all of your documents, process them appropriately, uh, review uh, and give you, you know, a grade, grade point average, if we will convert it to the, uh, the U.S. grade point scale, which is out of four, and then we send it off to whatever department you're applying to for review. So I think it's it's really important to understand that our team, we, we process and we get your application to where it needs to go, but we don't make any of the admissions decisions and we don't make any of the scholarship decisions. All of that happens at the individual, you know, departmental level. So that that's something that's that's really, really, really important to understand. And and the one thing as, as you're looking through this application requirements for graduate. The one thing that's not on here that I wanted to mention is that starting this uh, this year for, for spring, or, or sorry, for fall 2024, uh, graduate programs will start accepting Duolingo. They historically did not, uh, and now they will. And the required score for that is a 120. So that's something that I that I wanted to wanted to mention. <clears throat> And this is this is the cost of uh, graduate programs. So, like I said, th there are there are a couple ways that you can get funded. I mean, you can do full funding, you can do partial funding, but it's really really important um, that if you have funding questions, to reach out to the individual department that you're speaking to, or, or I'm sorry, that you're applying to, uh, just to talk about certain funding options. I can certainly, you can email me and I can certainly put you in touch with the right person, but but ultimately funding decisions are, are made at the individual uh, departmental level. And yeah, real, real quickly here, I, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about outcomes. Um, you know, what, what can CSU give you? Um, and so on the left there, you have your average starting salaries for your graduate students. And then on the right, you have your average starting salary uh, for your undergraduate students. And then our most popular majors kind of with our international students are business engineering, computer science. Uh, obviously, we have a lot more students that are graduating from other programs, but those are our top three right now. And you can see the, the average starting salary in each of those in each of those areas. Um, one thing that I think is really important to understand or really important to stress is, is how hard Colorado State will work to find uh, OPT opportunities for you. So OPT, for those that don't know, is optional practical training. And what it allows you to do is stay in the United States once you have graduated and work for a company on your student visa. So typically, you know, if you want to work for a company in the U.S., you got to get hired. They have to sponsor your work visa, and that's kind of a kind of a process. With OPT, you can just stay, stay on your current student visa that you would be on anyway, and go and work for a company from. Usually, it's one, but it can be from one to three years. And you can see that we have six hundred plus companies have hired our graduates on OPT. They, they want our graduates, they know how qualified they are, and, and, and they work hard to get them. And we work hard um, in our office and at our career center to give you, to give you opportunities. Um, and there's just some companies down there that you can see that have hired our graduates. 
Another thing that I'll talk about real quickly with Colorado is that this was happening before COVID, but COVID really pushed this forward is it's become incredibly popular place to live. Um, I think people, what you saw really was people leaving the coasts just because it's very expensive to live there. And they started moving to places like Colorado. And so companies recognized that and started putting a lot of regional offices in this state, which has really built up the kind of the tech scene, the entrepreneur scene, just the overall business scene in the state of Colorado. It's become very, very uh, attractive over the last decade. And then that's it. Like I said, I wasn't going to present at you for the next hour. Um, we do have an Instagram. If you want to follow us, you can contact us directly. Uh, Wellspring has my my information as well. So feel free to kind of reach out to any of the uh, representatives in your region. And so I think with that, I'll stop sharing and we yeah. can add some Q&A. That was perfect. Nate, thanks very much. Yeah. That's touched on all of the the key points, and I think you gave us a really a really good sense of culturally of what what the area is and what the what the school stands for as well. So that's awesome. Well, what I'll do is, without any uh, further ado, I'll start adding people from the participants list, letting them into the room. So so then you you'll be able to um, answer answer uh, ask and answer some questions. This might take a moment because we have 63 participants and I we click on, we, I know we click on them individually to let them in. So I'm going to start letting them in and uh, and please do um, do feel free to ask any questions and also um, the sales team if there's anything that that Nate touched on that you'd like to hear more about then then feel free to chip in. I'll start letting people in right now. There isn't a button just to let everyone I, in. So. I know that's uh I'm gonna have to email Zoom and get that yeah. get that added. Yeah. Hello? Hi. Hello? Can you hear me? Is that David? Yes, yes. It's David. David. Yeah. Nice to hear from you. Yes. What's your question? Yes, um uh, we are from Shanghai, China. So we are detected that uh, recently. Almost all of our family and students was giving us feedback. And before, they were searching for high-ranking university. But, you know, the economic is he, uh, hurt hardly here. So mm -hmm. they want to find some Hello, program. Hi. Hello? Hello? Can you hear? Carry on, David. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so they Hello, want to man. find some programs that uh, while they invest maybe two million for their higher education in US and could find at least an OPT or, you know, co-op in United States or in the North America. So yeah. I'm wondering that if Colorado State can offering this opportunity like uh, what they want. Yeah, I mean, this is my question. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's a good question. Thank you for it. Um, I. I mean, yes, we we I mean, we really do work hard to get students on OPT opportunities because we know that's what they want, um, mm. right? Can I mean, can I sit here and guarantee that we're going to give you an OPT? No, I, I can't guarantee that. Um, mm. But but what I what I will say is that you know every university in the United States and, and really across the world, I, I would say is going to have like we have a career center, right, that helps students mm -hmm. get. Within that career mm -hmm. center, they've hired positions specifically to work with students for OPT. And I can tell you mm -hmm. that is not, not the norm. That's not a normal thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so, so we have a lot of OPT. I know that our engineering program specifically has a lot mm -hmm. of co-op opportunities as well. So, so if you don't get, you know, or, or if you 
you don't think you're going to get an OPT, you could go and work with our career center for a co-op opportunity. Um, so you kind mm-hmm. of have two different options based on mm-hmm. your situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, we, we're sending a lot of students to United States universities. You know, right. their average GPA in, in, in junior and senior is 3.5 plus, you know. We are kind of uh, agent can sending excellent students to U.S. universities. So which means uh, when they are academically succeed in their university life. So we want to at least ensure and co-op, you know, a co-op at least. Maybe OPT, they, they need the, some company to sign the contract. Then yeah. they can apply the OPT extension on their uh, F1 visa. So I think OPT could be optional, but is there any measures in the field that Colorado State can offer uh, a certain you know, uh, co-op included the program so that we can introduce the program to the students? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I know that, like I said, the engineering has a lot of co-op opportunities. Um, our College of Business has a lot of internships uh, kind of as mm-hmm. part the program which is I, I i think that's what you're asking um mm-hmm. I, I mean without being able to guarantee anything really within our our business engineering computer science is another big one you know these super high demand um mm. areas um and also i don't know how popular this is but uh our college mm-hmm. of agricultural sciences mm-hmm. has, it's a huge co-op opportunity because we were originally started as an agricultural school. So those programs are very old. And also, uh, you know, we live in a very agricultural part of the United States. So it's, it's, it's a really, really big deal here. Yes. Yeah. So- yeah. Okay. I, I could understand that there's never been a hundred percent guarantee. Uh, so my second question will come to, because, you know, uh, the strong measures in Colorado state, uh, maybe it's very popular in the United States or even worldwide, but but maybe it's not so popular in China, you know. So so is there any summer program or or we call winter program for students can experience some you know the strong major program in in, in your university? For example, we can we can arrange students to have uh, two weeks or even three weeks trip to your university to have some uh, very professional lessons. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we I'm just for instance, they can yeah. experience the mind, mind digment, you know. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, it's so, okay. So, so we, we've we've done that before. T- typically, what we've done is uh, paired that with like an English language training. Mm-hmm. As well, so like you take English language lessons and then you learn about electrical and computer engineering, for example, like something like mm-hmm. that. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's that's historically how we've we've uh, built those programs. Okay, so what we are concerned is uh, because when we introduce some uh, new program or new university to our students, we must have a very strong character of of it. You know, so uh, if a university without any character, we cannot introduce because they will not they 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 they, they won't make the uh, the new university as their option. You know. So that's why we want to uh, let them to know some guaranteed or some uh, very characteristic programs they can experience before they make decision. So that's why I I ask these two questions. Yeah, I I understand. And so if you're interested in building like two week programs, uh, reach out to me and we can talk specifics. That's, sure, that's- sure. We yeah we we. We are we are thinking that uh, maybe we can try some uh, something information before we take action because you know mm-hmm. it, the customer and students they they are very confused about uh, the environment now uh, you know you invest a lot of money but no return you know uh, you you cannot find a co-op no job you know just a return to China and find nothing um, I think this is not worth it you know so, yeah. Thanks a lot, David, for those questions. Really good questions. And um, and yeah, I think uh, it's worth following up on that. I know that Shin will reach out to you um, and we can yeah. look into look into all of those things. 
thanks also for your question about the, the OPT uh, opportunities. We got a question in the Q&A here, Nate, from uh, Rizna from Axel Education in Indonesia. And she's just wondering what, um, in terms of OPT, what student visa should it be? Should it be a J1 or an F1 visa? So it's, it's, got, it's a great question. It's got to be an F1. Um, and the, in the OPT process, what they do, because I'm not a, there's a certain credential you have to have to, to work with OPD. I don't have it. So I don't, I don't work with the OPT students directly. Um, they, they email them about a year before their graduation to see, to, to start the paperwork, right? So, I mean, you're talking about the US government, immigration, it's gonna take a while. Um, and so they that's why they reach out super early to um, help you with that. So students aren't left alone. I mean, every international student who's gonna graduate will get this email. And so it's not like they have to stumble in the dark and try to figure it out for themselves. So, so they yeah. will be. Yeah, awesome, okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll go through some of the questions that have, have come in via chat and, and Q&A. Um, we've got one here. <clears throat> Just wondering about um, what would be the recommended GRE score for a Colorado State graduate program? Is there a ballpark GRE score that you would anticipate needing? So, so what I can do, I get this question with everyone. I, I should have gotten ahead of it. Um, so we have 80 different graduate programs with 80 different GRE requirements. Um, yeah. and, and some don't even require the GRE. So, so what I'm going to do is I will, sh uh, I will, I, I can share a link that can get handed out where you can search by each individual program, uh, graduate program. And it tells you is the GRE required and what's the average score. That, okay. that's the best way to do it. Okay, that, that would be awesome. Thanks, Patien, for that for that yeah. question. Um, I think you, there's a, there's a question here as well, Nate, I think you may have actually touched on this a little bit already. It's just asking about the scholarship policy for international students. Yeah, um, so so like for, the, for those looking for bachelor's degrees, it's, I, I think maybe the question would be like, what are you looking for to grant a scholarship? Uh, and what what justifies a bigger scholarship? Um, you know, for us, we're, we are mainly looking at your transcripts. We're mainly looking at those grades. Uh, we, we do read the essay. We do look at extracurriculars, but it's mainly the grades. Um, one thing I will just be completely transparent about, we look and see how involved you are with us. Do you open our emails? Do you come to our webinars? Uh, you know, if 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 I'm hosting an event in your region, are you reaching out? Um, but demonstrated interest. If you show that you actually care and might attend Colorado State, we're we're going to take that into consideration. And so, you know, some of our students last year who received some of our highest scholarships didn't necessarily have the highest grades. They they were students that showed that they really wanted to be a part of Colorado State. And so we we also take that into consideration as well. So really, really good question. Yeah, it is. It is. Thanks for that answer. Um, another one here uh, that's in the in the chat, actually. Um, are you aware, Nathan, of any graduate programs that are a little less competitive to uh, to apply for? Yeah. So, um, I mean, so I, I don't want to make it seem like all of our graduate programs need super high GREs because because all of them don't. And a lot of them don't even require the GRE or the GMAT at all. Um, I, You know, I there's a term and forgive me if you know it in, in the U.S., we, we call it a professional master's. Right. Which means there's not a research component. You're just coming in, you're taking classes, you might do a project. And, and then that's it. Um, and so like an example of this would be like an MBA. Um, our Masters of Computer Information System is incredibly popular because it's a professional master's. Um, I, I think it kind of just depends on what field you're in. The, the, you know, the engineering or the STEM fields do tend to require GREs and are a little bit more competitive, but your businesses, maybe your economics, you're not super research intensive fields 
are a little less competitive. Okay, okay, that's 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 something to bear in mind. Thanks for that. Um, are there enough on-campus housing options for international students, especially for freshmen? Yep, you are guaranteed a spot. We have uh, we have plenty. So, uh, and we're building more. So we're not we're not going to run out. You will you will have um, uh, very very easy access to housing. Awesome. And um, is there an airport pickup service from from Denver Airport Airport to Fort Collins? Yes, yes, there is. So so when you arrive, there'll be people. When you arrive the first time, there'll be people there to kind of guide you from Colorado State. Um, there's also a shuttle that runs back and forth from campus to the airport. So we there 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 is that. And how long does it take from Denver to Fort Collins? You know, from, from so Den Denver, like Denver City, it's about an hour. Um, the airport's a little bit outside Denver, so it's a little. I mean, it's like an hour, maybe fifteen minutes. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, and then one more here. Uh, could you share the acceptance rates of some of the popular programs, for example, business analytics or data science? That's graduate programs they're asking about there. Do you have a rough idea of acceptance rates for those programs or similar programs? So off, I mean, off the top of my head, I, I don't. Because um, no. the thing about, and I'm not, I'm not trying to dodge your question. The thing about these graduate programs is, you know, some some year they might have, fewer applicants and a higher acceptance rate and then and then vice versa you know a ton of applicants and lower acceptance rates so it it, it kind of fluctuates I can't I mean I know people in both of those programs I'm happy to reach out to them and, and see if I can get those answers okay okay that'll be awesome uh great so thanks a lot for those those questions people that are putting them in the uh in the Q&A feature that's really really helpful um yeah, is there is there anyone else who's uh, with us live and would like to would like to unmute themselves and ask Nate a question? Please do feel free. Uh, in the meantime, while we while we wait on that, there's a there's a question, another question here from Patient. Um, would you share any ideas explaining the safety in um, Fort Collins and at Colorado State University? Um, and it mentions here Greensburg. Um, but yeah, safety is a concern. Um, I think sometimes, particularly amongst Asian parents, you know, about uh, about going to study in the United States. What what are your thoughts on that, Nathan? Yeah, well, I mean, the media doesn't do us any favors, right? Every time yeah. you turn it, it's just another bad bad report. Um, I I think it, it's hard. It's hard for me to sum up the US, right? But but what I, I can talk about Fort Collins, obviously I live here, I've lived here for almost a decade. So um, when you have a place like Fort Collins where such a high percentage of the population is like students and professors, yeah, uh, you know, it, it, w there's a lot of those across the US. Th those are really safe places. Um, you can read our crime statistics on our campus. We're obligated to report those every single year. Um, the number one crime every year is bicycle theft, which, you know, in the grand scheme of things is not 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 that that big of a of a problem. Um, and, and, and in terms of the state, two things I'll mention, or I'm sorry, the city, like we have students from every single state in the U.S., and like I said, over a hundred countries. So we not only have international representation, we have a really large geographic representation among U.S. citizens. And so I, I, I say that to mean there's people from all over. It's not like, you know, we're not a school where it's just students from Colorado come to. I mean, they come from all over, all over the world. And so I think when you have that collection of people, the, those places are just not... They tend to be a lot safer, and and we are. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, I think bicycle theft is probably uh, probably a pretty common crime in in China as well, patient. Uh, so that's I think we can cope. Um, then another question here: Could you please tell us about the students' accommodation, either off campus or on campus price range? How much money should the students 
be spending for staying in a in an apartment off campus per month? Yeah, I think off campus you're probably looking at at least a thousand dollars, but probably closer to maybe one thousand two hundred, one thousand three hundred. Um, you know, on campus it's going to be a little bit cheaper of that, or ch- I'm sorry, cheaper than that. Uh, you can also include a meal plan for your students if if you want. You don't have to. Uh, that's going to be an additional charge. But um, yeah, the 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 problem with being in a beautiful spot near the mountains is everybody wants to live here, and that kind of kind of jacks up uh, prices yeah. a little bit. So I would say one thousand two hundred to one thousand four hundred. Okay, still not too bad, you know, for such a nice nice part of the world. Yeah. Um, Another one here. Would you would you share how to apply for TA or financial aid opportunities when applying for graduate programs? And what is TA? I'm just I'm struggling with the acronym there. Do you know what that is, Nate? I'm, I'm assuming they mean teaching assistant. So oh, got you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So 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 that one's pr- so for the it, it's two different questions. So for the assistant, like the teaching assistant, if you get admitted and the program offers a TA, that they'll just simply send you the application and apply if you want or you don't have to. So, so that, one's, that one's pretty simple. Um, most of our graduate programs are very upfront during the application process of saying, hey, this is the cost of our program. Here is our... Um, uh, scholarships and so they tell you right away and they let you know what you can afford so so all of that happens very early in the um process or the, or the time right after you get accepted so as soon as you get accepted then they'll take you to the next step of applying for scholarships so they kind of they, they'll guide you okay okay that's awesome um so that's the last of our last of our written questions if Anybody else has a anything else they want to ask? Do feel free to unmute yourselves. I think you can unmute yourselves, right? Uh, and and ask a question. Um, uh, Nathan, so um, are freshmen, international freshmen, required to stay on campus for maybe at least one or two years, or are they allowed to leave off campus even on the first year? Yeah, great question. So first time freshmen are required to live on campus for the first year. Okay. Right. So um, do you have in mind that uh, any popular like graduate program that wave Chimado GRE, just some popular one like... Um, yeah. yeah, so um, our MBA doesn't require it. Uh, computer information systems doesn't require it. Um, I, I, I ugh, don't quote me on this. I think computer science doesn't require it. Um, but like I said, I can, I can send you a whole list and let you know the ones that don't require it because I know that's I know that's what students are asking. Yeah, thank you. That would be handy. Yeah, so I saw that uh, in the requirement, you said for undergrad, there's a $50 application fee or waiver. So in which case student can get the waiver for the application fee? Yeah, so that was a mistake on my part. I, I didn't take it out of the presentation. Um, it's okay. not, yeah, we don't do a waiver. Okay. Yeah, so because um, most of our school in Wellspring, we, we do offer a waiver for the application fee. So, um, yeah, it would be better if there's some consideration for the student to get the waiver from the application fee. Let me, I'll t- have to take it back to my team, but we yeah. can talk more about that. Yeah, see what we can do. <laughs> Okay, uh, there's another question come in here, Nathan. I can see many rounds for graduate admission. Would you share the differences for the different rounds? And will they receive an early decision if they apply early? That's a, that's a good question about timings of decisions and things like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it is. It's a great question. Um, 
the 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 blessing and the curse of the United States is how big it is and how many schools we have and how many different deadlines they have. <laughs> so um I mean for us if you're applying say for fall 2024 uh for a graduate program yeah typically you need to apply by like now this time of year. Um and then they all release decisions at the same time starting in I believe February. Um but a lot of our a lot of our graduate decisions um or i'm sorry application deadlines are are early november and so that that's something that, to keep in mind as well is that if you miss a deadline the graduate programs are, are not as likely to help you or, or allow you to apply late versus the bachelor's programs they kind of are uh yeah. for us so yeah. really important to do your research and and, and apply as early as you can yeah, that's always the best advice, I think, get in early. Well, we had 63 participants. I, I'm very impressed. Well done, Asia. Um, I think we had sort of set aside about 45, 50 minutes for this. So um, I think we've had a great presentation from from Nate and some great uh, questions there at the end so um, if you're happy with that Nate if you're happy with everything then perhaps we we can wrap it up we'll um we'll also send out this video to anybody who who wants to uh, recap any of the the talking points there um but yeah that's that's been excellent thanks thanks so much for your time Nate yeah, thank you, uh, Wellspring team. Nice, nice to meet you all and appreciate the participants showing up. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, our pleasure to help. Thanks, everyone. I will uh, end it there. And um, and also, you know, reach out to your reach out to your sales representative for your area if you have any follow up questions. You know, we've got a direct line through to Nate to uh, to, to to come back to you with any any information that you might have missed. All right. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good day, everyone who's over here and have a good evening to everyone or the one person who's in Colorado. Thanks a lot, Nate. Thank you. Cheers. Take care. Thank you. Bye, Bye now. Bye.